Hello everybody and welcome to me filming on my phone because I dropped my camera and broke it. Today I'm filming my favourite books of Q2 2020 aka The Quarantine Reads. So these are my top 10 books from April to June 2020. As always I film um, January to March, April to June, July to September and October to December. I do those as individual videos and then my overall top 40 books of the year. Uh, you know, follows at the end of the year. So these are my favourite books of Q2. Uh, these are in order, so uh, the first one comes in at number 10 and the last one comes in at number 1. So in at number 10 we have Wilt Haven by Ollie Jacobs. So this is uh, quite Lovecraftian inspired indie novel. It's also written a bit like Dracula in that it's um, uh, an epistolary novel really, so it's presented as this series of uh, records the um the bpd which i think is the bureau bureau of Paranor paranormal detectives maybe um it's their notes on investigating this weird town called wilthaven this is like lovecraftian 1950s style town with all these eldritch abominations going on it's very cool um it's quite creative a uh, cool little indie novel and um one of ollie's best in my opinion so yeah definitely check that out in at number nine, we have The Ardlement Mystery by Daniel Smith. So this is a book that I was sent for review purposes quite a few years ago now, and I never got to it, um, but it's a non-fiction book, and it's about uh, the real-life murders and uh, subsequent legal trials that inspired Sherlock Holmes. So I believe it was, I think there were two detectives who were said to have inspired Holmes, and then there's also a guy who was called John Watson, who's meant to be a big inspiration for Dr. Watson. So yeah, it was cool to kind of read about those and to see like some of the similarities they had. Uh, Conan Doyle had actually met a few of the people. And so it was really cool because it was like um, true crime in terms of it was actually following these two murders and the subsequent legal trials, as well as the outcomes of them. But then also it then related it back to Sherlock Holmes and like, so it was kind of like literary investigation in that sense too. So it was very cool, it was worth reading. But yeah, it was a really cracking read and I liked the fact that it was both a literary investigation and um, you know, a, real mystery as well. In at number eight we have Notes from a Big Country by Bill Bryson. So Bill Bryson is a travel writer. He was originally American then moved to the UK and then went back to America and this is basically him re-exploring America after having been in the UK basically. So and the reason it's called Notes from a Big Country is that uh, his big hit or his first real successful novel was Notes from a Small Island which was his travels around the UK. So it's kind of a play on that. And uh, yeah, really good. And especially during a time like now when you can't actually go and travel, I thought it was good to, for a bit of escapism. In at number seven, we have Poirot Investigates by Agatha Christie. Uh, yeah, I've just still been working my way through my, my Christie's. I actually can't remember much about this one other than that I really enjoyed it. I think, uh, I don't know, Poirot's never been my favorite. I've always preferred Miss Marple, but I think in this one, uh, I did I did find Poirot quite you know, quite enjoyable, so yeah, that's why it ranks here. And number six, we have The Armageddon Rag by George R.R. R. Martin. So this is basically a novel following a band called the Nazgul. Um, there's a lot of similarities between this and my current work in progress, which is a band called Monsters of, uh, a book called Monsters of Rock uh, about a fictional band. Um, and they're all made out of like or uh, orcs and dwarves and stuff. Martin's thing is a bit different because they're just like a human band, but obviously they're named after the Tolkien creation. And um, yeah, it was just it was just an interesting little read, uh, quite dark. There are bits of supernatural in it as well, but also it's one that you're going to enjoy if you're a music. And number five, we have The Wind Up Bird Chronicles by Haruka Murakami. So this was a buddy read with Charlie Heathcote. I don't think he enjoyed it as much as I did, but um, I'm pretty much a Murakami fan by this point. I think I've, I've, I enjoy his writing, if nothing else. And uh, his books are the kind of books where they make me think as I'm reading them and, um, you know, I don't, they're, they're the kind of books when I read them, I think there's no way I could ever have written that book. And I, I don't know, I like to um, broaden my mind a bit by reading books like that where I can, you know? Next up at number four, we have The Positronic Man by Isaac Asimov and Robert Heinberg. Now, Heinberg actually wrote most of this. It's based on um, Bicentennial Man, which is a, a, an Asimov short story. And obviously it's been turned into a movie as well. And basically this story is about a robot whose job is to guard these young girls. And he sort of slowly over time becomes more and more human. And um, 
we sort of follow what happens there and uh you know he sort of fights for his rights and he wants to become his own owner and stuff and i just think it does a lot of really cool stuff with the laws of robotics and shows how they can be bent and then eventually broken i suppose um i as i'm really good at doing that i've set in this like framework for the story and then experimenting with how much that framework can then be bent um, and also, I think just today, there's a lot of parallels with like the civil rights movement, which was actually in its early days when, you know, Asimov was in his heyday. And uh, yeah, overall, just a, a real thinker of a book, you know. And number three, we have Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. So this is a, a novel, basically, and it's kind of presented as a collection of stories written by these people who've gone off to this writer's retreat. Um, but it's kind of a bit, and then there were none by Agatha Christie vibes as well, because um, a couple of them start dying and stuff, and they're all like locked in this house, basically. Uh, interesting read, it's got this typical Paul and Nick spin. I like the fact that none of the characters have names, we just, um, we get, their names are basically descriptions of them, you know? And um, again, this is another one of those books that I don't think I could have written myself, but um, I really enjoyed reading, and it was definitely a, definitely a thinker. And then we have... At number two, Transcript by Heimrad Bakker. So this is basically blackout poetry in which the author has taken these Nazi transcripts of uh, during the Holocaust and has then used those um, to create blackout poetry where they cross out lines, etc., and create new meaning with it. Uh, except they've kind of done it the other way around as well, so they've selectively used different bits of it. It's kind of a combination of blackout poetry and found poetry. Cat's photo bombing me here. Uh, it's very bleak and the language is obviously like it can be tough to read at times because it's about the holocaust um but i thought it was really well done a really fascinating read and um just an interesting use of language so definitely one i'd recommend and then at number one we have station 11 by emily st john mandel so i think this was probably helped by the time at which i read it because this is a post-apocalyptic novel following basically a group of uh, like traveling performers during the like during the post-apocalypse after a super flu style thing except we also see a lot uh, which i don't hear mentioned a lot we also see a lot of like before the flu happened and stuff and um which really adds to the story it makes it a bit more three-dimensional and kind of gives these characters these more fulfilling story arcs you know but i think what uh emily st john mandel did really well is that she kind of predicted a lot of stuff that has actually happened so for example at one point one of the characters panic by his toilet roll and i'm just there like how did she know this burn the witch uh it was also really beautifully written as well and it's just one of those books um i mean it's if i were to reread any of the books on this list i'd probably pick station 11 the positronic man and maybe the armageddon rag i think those would be my top three picks to to do a reread of so yeah those are my favorite books of q2 2020 as always don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and i will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye